Hello, you're watching the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Ajawi. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of good wishes to Dr. Abdel Latif Jamal Rashid on his election as Iraq's new president. His Majesty the King expressed most sincere congratulations, wishing him every success to achieve the aspirations of the Iraqi people for more growth and prosperity. His Majesty the King underlined the deep historical relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of Iraq, stressing the Kingdom's keenness on further bolstering them to achieve common interests. He wished the new Iraqi President abundant health and happiness and constant security and stability to Iraq and its people. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa followed the participation of a representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, the leader of the Royal Endurance Team, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in the Fontainebleau International Endurance Championship in the Republic of France. In the presence of His Highness, the first Vice President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Authority for Sports, and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, their old team won the 160-kilometer race and the 127-kilometer race. The achievement followed the victory of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the eight-year-old world championship held in Spain. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa expressed his happiness, honor, and the royal team follow-up of His Majesty and the riders of the Royal Endurance Team achievement in the French Fontainebleau International Endurance Championship won by rider Abdurrahman Al Zayed for a distance of 160 kilometers and rider Mayouf Al Rumehi for a distance of 127 kilometers. His Honor Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa stressed that the results of the royal team embody the care and patronage that equestrian sports enjoy from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the support and interest of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa praised the team's efforts in the French Fontainebleau International Endurance Championship, in which His Highness participated in the 160-kilometer race. Other Royal Endurance team members achieved leading positions with rider Hamad Al Qahtani winning third place in the 127-kilometer race, while rider His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa finished third in the 120 in the 100-kilometer race. عوضة يا أبو حمد أبدع دائما واليوم أبدع مع قرار طبعا إعادة الفحص إلا أن إحنا نعتبرك لازلت بطل الله يسلمك قيادتك لهذا الفريق أولا فوزنا اليوم أمام سيدي جلالة الملك الله يطول عمره في هذه البطولة بطولة فرنسا في فونتون بلو شرف كبير اللي يعني حط النقط على الحروف إحنا جينا اليوم معانا خيل مستعدة كانت تشارك بطولة العالم فكانت اليوم ابراز عضلات من هو اللي على الدرب الصحيح واكتشفنا اليوم ان احنا فعلا على الدرب الصحيح وقدرنا نتقلب على خيل قويه اساسيه كانت المفروض تركض بطوله العالم. 
طول العمر ما وجه المقارنه ما بين سباق فرنسا وسباق اسبانيا من حيث الارض من حيث طبيعه الموضوع وقيادتكم كل حادث حديث لكل سباق صولاته وجولاته وكل حصان يختلف فاليوم المنافسه هذه ما تقل عن منافسه اسبانيا طبعا هذه 160 وخيل اخبر واكبر ولكن يعني الحمد لله انا فرحان 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 جدا اليوم بالنتيجه الحمد لله ما هو تعليقك على فوز عبد الرحمن الزايد الله يسلمه عبد الرحمن فوزه هذا فوزنا كلنا لانه يعطينا المؤشر والثقه ان احنا على الدرب السليم ناصر بن حمد ما ما يوقف عند اي نقطه ما هو القادم الان القادم ان شاء الله اكبر من هذا باذن الله On the second day of the Fontaine Bleu International and French Endurance Championship, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, Captain of the Royal Endurance Team, His Honor Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, continued the participation of the team's riders in the 120-kilometer race for public and juniors. In the presence of the first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority, and chairman of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser was keen to meet the royal team's riders as part of His Highness' motivation to the riders and giving them instructions to follow the technical plan set by the team to achieve the goals of participating in the 120-kilometer race. His Highness stressed the importance of gaining experience for young riders in light of the participation of elite riders from the world who have a great record in European participation. His Highness Sheikh Nasser indicated that the Royal Team achieved many goals in this participation after a series of continuous achievements that have been made over the past period, praising the efforts of the team members and the riders. A 120-kilometer race was held in five stages with a large participation of riders from different countries of the world. A ceremony was held to crown the winners of the championship from the Royal Endurance Team. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of good wishes to Dr. Abdul Latif Jamal Rashid on his election as President of the Republic of Iraq. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister wished His Excellency Dr. Abdul Latif Jamal Rashid success in achieving further progress and prosperity for Iraq and its people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister commended the long standing Bahraini Iraqi relations, emphasizing the importance of continuing to develop relations across all fields. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, met with Standard Chartered Bank Board Chairman Jose Vinales and Regional Chief Executive Officer, Africa and Middle East, Sunil Kaushal. 
The meeting was held in the presence of the Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, Rashid Mohammed Al Ma'raj, and the Minister of Sustainable Development, Noor bint Ali Al Khalif. The Minister of Finance and National Economy held the meeting on the sideline of his participation in the annual meetings of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank in Washington. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa underlined the important and vital role of the financial and banking sector in promoting economic growth and creating more promising investment opportunities. The meeting shed light on the issues of common interest as well as the latest global economic developments. And the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, underscored the significant role played by the financial and banking sector in backing the national economy and attracting investments. He affirmed the importance to continue supporting the sector to promote its role at all levels. He was speaking as he met with the global head of Cities Public Sector Group, Julie Monaco, on the sideline of his participation in the annual meetings of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank in Washington in the U.S. The meeting was held in the presence of the Governor of the Central Bank of Bahrain, Rashid Al Ma'raj, and the Minister of Sustainable Development, Noor bint Ali Al Khalif. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa pointed out the importance to continue boosting the cooperation with the international financial and banking establishments and exchanging expertise in providing financial and banking services. Both sides reviewed the latest global economic developments and issues of common interest. And the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, met in the presence of the Minister of Sustainable Development, Noor bin Ali Al Khalif with Egyptian Minister of International Cooperation, Dr. Rania Al-Mashat. The meeting was held on the sideline of his participation in the annual meetings of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank in Washington. Both sides reviewed the distinguished fraternal ties binding the two countries and ways of bolstering the financial and economic cooperation. The Minister of Finance and National Economy noted the significant role of exchanging experiences and the best practices to enhance Bahrain's financial standing at local, regional and international levels. Both sides also discussed means of bolstering bilateral cooperation as well as the latest global economic development. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna bint Ahmed al rumehi congratulated the engineering sector in Bahrain on the occasion of Bahrain Engineer Day, which is observed on October 15th. She praised the contributions of the sector's affiliates to the government's develop development projects. The minister pointed out that the kingdom's urban development is the result of the rich experience of the Bahraini architects and their keen desire to serve the nation and citizens. She also stressed the ministry's pride in all its affiliates who are working patriotically to serve the housing and urban sector. In the presence of the Minister of Tourism, Fatma bin Jafar al-Sayrafi and the Secretary General of the Higher Education Council and Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Higher Education Council, Dr. Sheikh Rana bin Isa bin Daij al-Khalifa, the Vatel Hospitality College held an induction day for college students for the academic year 2022-2023. The Minister of Tourism affirmed that the students of the Vatel College of Hospitality are the future leaders in the hotel and tourism sector, noting that the students will contribute to the development of the kingdom's reputation as a tourist destination. She noted that there are ample job opportunities in the sector for ambitious students and they are expected to get opportunities to represent the kingdom of Bahrain abroad as part of their studies at Vatel College. Al-Sayrafi stressed that Vatel College is one of the strategic tools that the tourism sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain depends on, which contributes qualitatively to activating the hospitality sector in line with the Kingdom's tourism strategy 2022 to 2026. More than 35 Bahraini embassies, consulates and diplomatic missions are organizing the 2022 parliamentary elections for voting abroad. All voters re registered in the voters' rolls can vote to select their candidates. Parliamentarians, if they're outside the Kingdom of Bahrain, will vote on the 8th of November, while the runoff will be on the 15th of the same month. Due to the difference in world time, the Embassy of the Kingdom of Bahrain in Japan is the first embassy to open its doors to voters residing abroad. 
on the last two missions of the Kingdom of Bahrain in which elections will be held abroad will be the Embassy of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United States of America in Washington and the permanent mission of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Nations in New York. Votes will be collected from outside the Kingdom of Bahrain and at home. Then the election results will be announced through the competent supervisory committee in all the governorates of the Kingdom. The first Deputy Speaker of the Shura Council and Head of the Delegation of the Parliamentary Division at the Kingdom of Bahrain, Mr. Jamal Mohammed Fakhro, participated in the work of the 145th General Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union. In a panel discussion held on Friday within the framework of the Assembly on the eighth goal of sustainable development related to promote sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for all. The participants in the seminar discussed ways to achieve the eighth goal and the role of the parliamentarians to enact legislation and laws that support countries in achieving the goals. Mr. Fakhro, in his speech during the panel discussion, stressed the need to enhance technology investment in medium and small industries and how to harmonize between the use of modern technologies and economic stability for countries around the world. The Parliamentary Division of the Kingdom of Bahrain participating in the works of the 145th General Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union affirmed that Bahrain is full of laws and legislation supporting the enhancement of cybersecurity and ensuring the protection of the infrastructure of the communications and information technology sector. The Parliamentary Division stated at the meeting of the Standing Committee on International Peace and Security that the Kingdom of Bahrain is characterized by the existence of a clear system for the governance of cybersecurity through the efforts of the General Department for Combating Corruption Security, Economic and Electronic, and the National Committee Center for Cybersecurity of the Ministry of Interior. It noted that the legislative system contains many legislations related to cybersecurity and the protection of personal data to support the national cybersecurity framework. The Parliamentary Division commended the tireless work carried out by the National Center for Cybersecurity since its establishment and the advanced plans and programs implemented by it to enhance cybersecurity in the Kingdom, pointing out that Bahrain achieved an advanced rank in the Cybersecurity Readiness Index according to the International Telecommunication Union Report. The Office of the Women Parliamentarians in the Interparliamentary Union discussed the agenda of its next meeting which will be held in the Kingdom of Bahrain on the sideline of the 145th Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union. Shura Council Member Hala Ramzi Faiz participated in the closing meetings of which evaluated the participation of the Bureau's members in the meetings of the Standing Committees of the Interparliamentary Union and the workshops held during the Assembly's meetings in Rwanda. Ramsey invited the Office of Women Parliamentarians to attend the upcoming meetings of the General Assembly of the Union in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Office of Women Parliamentarian has reviewed the points drawn by the members of the Office from the meeting of the 145th, 45th Assembly of the Union, which promote and support the gender perspective and women's empowerment. The Parliamentary Division of the Kingdom of Bahrain submitted a report to the 145th General Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union on the practical steps taken by the Shura and Representative Councils to reach a smart and digital parliament in addition to legislative efforts to protect children and youth. Shura Council member and member of the Parliamentary Delegation, Hala Ramzi Faiz, reviewed the delegation's report which confirms that the Shura and Representative Councils keep space with progress and development in the fields of information and communication technology, noting that digital transformation began in 2018 with the abolition of paper use and reliance on electronic systems and procedures. She indicated a number of initiatives that have been implemented in the context of the digital transformation, including the adoption of the remote voting system, the digital parliamentary portfolio, and the adoption of a technical program in holding remote meetings. Ramsey stressed that the Shura and Representative Councils are keen to enact legislation and amend the laws in force to ensure the protection of children and youth 
and preventing their exploitation and abuse, including the child law, the restorative justice law for children, and the protection of children from abuse. The Interparliamentary Union commended the commitment of the Shuran Representative Councils to submit periodic reports and statements and the active and positive participation with studies and graphic surveys conducted by the Union on various topics. The Interparliamentary Union thanked and praised the parliaments of the countries that have shown fruitful cooperation with the Union and its General Secretariat, stressing that the Parliamentary Division of the Kingdom of Bahrain responds quickly and continuously to the Union. The Interparliamentary Union considered the Shura and Representatives Council as an example to follow in the field of observing gender balance in the two chambers, general secretariats, through the great efforts made by the gender balance committees in promoting the principles of balance and being guided by the tools and publications provided by the Interparliamentary Union. The Labour Market Regulatory Authority, represented by its Legal Control Division, conducted a joint inspection campaign aimed at arresting the violating employers and workers in Muharraq Governorate. The inspection was conducted in cooperation with the Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs of the Ministry of Interior and the Directorate of the Governorate Police. The inspection resulted in recording several violations of the LMRA law and the residency law, provisions arresting violators as well as taking legal measures. LMRA stressed its keenness on continuing the joint inspection campaigns with the relevant government bodies across all governorates of the kingdom in a bid to develop the work environment and firmly confront illegal practices. <laughs> 